Barbosa. I am currently in the Confinter Plus 6 Brazil meeting taking place in Brasilia and I am from the Latin American campaign for the right to education, CLADI. This meeting is very significant. Uh, it's important that we are taking part in it. Uh, Brazilian, the Brazilian government was also very generous to invite not only the Brazilian um, stakeholders, uh, state representatives and civil societies, but as well uh, inviting other networks from the region which uh, represents for us an opportunity to, to engage, to also have access to the reports that we, that we currently have, that UIL have been, has been presenting, that other colleagues from the region has also been presenting. So we are, we are now discussing and debating um, the context, the shortcomings and the challenges that we have ahead. And, and also it, it's an opportunity to strategize together and have, have the chance really to, to prepare towards the Confrontea Plus 6 meeting. Francisco Cabrera Romero, coordinador del Grupo de Incidencia en Política Educativa, JIPE, del Consejo de Educación Popular de América Latina y el Caribe, CEAL. Bueno, para el CEAL este evento es muy importante porque eh, representa uno de los espacios principales de conocimiento de avances y de rendición de cuentas con relación a los compromisos que los estados, y los organismos internacionales y la sociedad civil hemos adquirido en seguimiento de las metas de Confintea y particularmente de lo que para Latinoamérica y el Caribe representa. Es una oportunidad muy importante porque permite la interlocución con actores que están vinculados con el tema. Para el CEAL en particular es interesante eh, este tipo de reuniones porque Hacemos una labor de eh, auditoría social, de conocimiento de los avances y también de reporte de perspectiva crítica cuando los avances no se reportan. Y creo que aprovechar estas reuniones es necesario a pesar del formato poco ágil, poco flexible que, que representan estos eventos y que muchas veces no permiten que se dé efectivamente la interlocución en el nivel que nos gustaría tenerla. A pesar de eso, el CEAL aporta regularmente con análisis críticos, valoraciones, balances, eh, uno de los cuales ahora mismo estamos preparando, otro de los cuales mi colega ha presentado la tarde de, de ayer. Eh, así que son espacios, digamos, útiles en términos de visibilizar eh, aspectos que nos interesan como los avances y los rezagos que se reportan a nivel regional. Soy Malú Valenzuela y Gómez Gallardo. Eh, estoy acá como representante de la Red de Educación Popular entre Mujeres. Es una red latinoamericana y del Caribe que agrupa aproximadamente unas 70 organizaciones de la sociedad civil. Bueno, venir a este evento por supuesto que es mirar un poco la realidad brasileña en cuanto a los avances que han tenido en el Confintea más seis y eh, también de alguna manera el reunirnos con colegas, compañeras y compañeros de otras regiones, de otras redes que están eh, relacionadas con la educación de las personas jóvenes y adultas. Entonces, bueno, de alguna manera el que yo venga acá o que vengamos acá como REPEM significa el dar seguimiento a este tipo de iniciativas que se lanzaron porque lo que vemos es de a una u otra manera ciertos retrocesos. ¿no? Eh, en los informes tanto de la UIL como de la UNESCO y de otros, se dice que, que, que hay un avance, que hay algunas cuestiones que las mujeres o desde la perspectiva de género se han venido atendiendo, sin embargo lo que vemos es que existen grandes lagunas para realmente resarcir el problema de la falta de derecho a la educación de las mujeres. O sea, lo vemos en el campo, lo vemos en las mujeres afrodescendientes o las mujeres que tienen alguna discapacidad y en otros sectores de la sociedad en donde las mujeres verdaderamente no han tenido el cumplimiento, digamos, de este derecho eh, a la educación. Entonces, eh, nosotras estamos proponiendo o planteando hasta cuándo. Hi, my name is Charmaine Barrett from Jamaica and I am the Vice President Caribbean Region for the International Council for Adult Education. I'd like to share with you a little bit about the, my being here at the Confintia Brazil Plus Six. <laughs> um, 
Basically, the I believe it's important because it's it gives me an, an idea of what's happening in the region to understand the different thoughts, the different perspectives, the different ideas, where people are with the Belen framework to understand how similar, where the similarities lie between countries, between regions within the Caribbean and Latin America, and to see how where we are similar, where we are so very different, uh, and even though we have multiple languages, our, our realities sometimes cross and uh, paths. So some of the things I'm taking away from this experience here is uh, uh, the reality that even though, for example, the Sustainable Development Goals are big and seem uh, not, 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 not reflective of reality. For me, I think they are very important because they set a mark within which we can all find a space within our different contexts. And that, for me, is useful. I'm Werner Mauch from the UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning. I am Senior Program Specialist there and Coordinator of UIL's Adult Learning and Education Program. The overall Confintea follow-up process and its monitoring is part of my responsibilities at UIL. UIL is responsible for the overall monitoring of the Confintea follow-up process and so it's within my program where I am the coordinator of. So I am here to see in how far um, Brazil has intended or has met their own goals with regard to the Confintea process, how they read their midterm review, especially in the perspective that UNESCO is doing an overall midterm review uh, later in the, at the end of this year or uh, early next year. So this is also part of our own midterm review process. And finally, the intention of the midterm review is to see in how far the Belém Framework for Action can be articulated in accordance with the 2030 Framework for Action and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Clara has several expectations in regard to Confrontea Plus 6 meeting. Uh, one of them is that we be able to really place much more at the heart of the agenda uh, of, of education, adult education and literacy. We feel that it has always been left out in, 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 in terms of priority. It is never at the top of the priority list and there is such a huge debt towards the population, the adult population and the young, the youth population, that we really, we feel governments really has, have to change uh, this in a, in a very dramatic way. So there has to be political will to look at adult education and learning from a different perspective and really uh, give it the necessary priority that it deserves. So this is our first expectation. We also would like to have a much more uh, participatory process, a process that really ensures that uh, it's not just really experts who are being listened to. We feel that this expert focus has to be overcome. The, um, the actors of the education community have to have a much more significant role in not only in the Confintea process but in all processes of policy making that relate to adults adult, the adult and young, uh, youth population, and therefore we expect the educators to be much more present, um, the learners to be much more present, and really contribute in a much more significant, in a much more political way than the, these actors have so far. 
With regard to representation in the overall Confrontera process, it is key that NGOs are part of the official delegations. And from the side of UNESCO, we encourage member states to include representatives from civil society in national delegations. And very many of member states automatically do so because they know that their reporting, their world of adult learning education would not be complete. And so, but as a matter of principle, it is um, the best way is that. NGO representatives are part of national delegations. There are other uh, opportunities for civil, so civil society organizations that they are um, up, uh, how to say, allowed, or, uh, that they are participating in such events as observers. But the better way is always to become member of national delegations and of the official process. It, it brings to my mind some of the issues that I need to be careful about. One of the things that is of primary importance to me is how to engage the community-based organizations and to hear their voices and to ensure that their voices are heard in the policies that are made. And when I represent the Caribbean, for example, that I speak with their voices as well because really, there's no development, real development, if the entire society is not coming with us. And so everybody won't, be, won't move at the same pace, same rate, but I believe we should all move. And that adult learning and education offers that opportunity to all sorts of people. There is a certain difference between concept and theory and practice, but as a matter of principle, member state is more than government. And so it would be in the interest of those representing member states, which is governments, that they in, uh, help to design the whole picture. And it is always in their interest that the full picture is presented. And in so far, um, um, designing this overall picture is only possible when all actors contribute to it. And so it is without, it's out of the question that those fundamental complementary uh, elements that uh, are given by NGOs should be part of the overall picture. And it's in the interest of member states that they are part of. But it is also in their decision. UNESCO its director general invites through their national commission to create a national delegation and they are free to do but it's the recommendation of the director general always that representatives of NGOs should be part of the process and also uh, that they should be represented in the in the national delegations is that the the governments or let's say international bodies would recognize that it is important to facilitate financially developing countries that passionately want to accomplish these goals. All of what is articulated in the Bellum framework and that which is in, in the sustainable development goals, but we need help. Another expectation that we have is that we can see more concrete um, policy changes happening after Confrontea. So we, we are not really seeing or witnessing changes that are really necessary in terms of legislation, in terms of policies and in terms of practices. Uh, so we hope that Confrontea 6 plus 6 really manages to gather the, the momentum and the political will for concrete change. Que los estados puedan presentar reportes eh, realistas, creíbles, que tengan evidencias que los acompañen, que los organismos multilaterales, pero particularmente los de Naciones Unidas, también jueguen un papel cada vez más activo, más beligerante, y que la sociedad civil sea un actor eh, considerable en términos no solo de la entrega de reportes eh, oficiales y su análisis, sino también en términos de la generación de propuestas y mecanismos alternativos de avance. Porque no se trata nada más de dotar a las mujeres de más oportunidades para que tengan acceso a la escuela o para que sean alfabetizadas. Eh, todos sabemos que por cada una 
de, de las tres personas que no, que, que, que no tienen la posibilidad de leer escribir, que son analfabetas, pues de ellas dos son mujeres, ¿no? Y en algunos sectores que entonces son más empobrecidos, en las regiones más apartadas, pues el porcentaje es muchísimo mayor. Entonces hay, un, hay, hay, un, hay una, una deuda, digamos, ¿no? de parte de los estados, ¿no? porque muchas veces se ha venido planteando que, las, que, que hay un rezago educativo y muchas veces se coloca en las personas y nosotros creemos que eso está, es contrario, contraviene precisamente a todos los acuerdos que se han venido firmando por las Naciones Unidas y por otros organismos internacionales en donde decimos no, las personas no están en rezago y menos las mujeres. El que está en rezago es el Estado, que no ha brindado la igualdad de oportunidades para que las mujeres puedan tener, a la par de los hombres, las mismas eh, capacidades, el desarrollo de las mismas capacidades que se han tenido. Entonces sí hay una cuestión de retroceso. Creo que en esta misma conferencia nos damos cuenta que se retrocede un poco en el planteamiento de poder dotar a las mujeres de otras capacidades. ¿no? Entonces se vuelve a la alfabetización, se vuelve al acceso a educación básica y se vuelve al papel que las mujeres han, han venido cumpliendo en las labores del hogar, en frente a la, a la salud o a la alimentación de la familia, al bienestar de la familia y creemos que esto pues mucho, mucho tiempo atrás se luchó para que se pudiera cambiar ese esquema. Entonces estamos pues, eh, en, en, en esta exigencia para que con Fintea 6, digo, al, con Fintea 6, más 6 pueda volver a mirar estos compromisos que ha tenido para que realmente pueda cambiar la cosa. Last but not least, we, we, which is actually a point that perhaps comes before the others or that is Uh, that will feed into policies and legislations and into the participation of the adult community and the learners uh, has to do with the perspective, what perspective do we really have in terms of the meaning of adult education and literacy, the meaning of lifelong education. What is it that we are understanding? Do we have a, are, are governments putting in place a more economicist approach to adult education and literacy, an instrumental approach, a human capital approach? Clady has the expectation to move away from these perspectives because policies that are actually implemented within that perspective are unhelpful from our point of view. So, what do we mean when we discuss adult education and literacy and lifelong education through a human life? human rights perspective. We want to, as civil society, not just CLADI, but other sister organizations, to really offer um, Confinte Apple 6 a contribution in that direction. And, and we, re we really hope that coming out of Confinte, we have um, a paradigm that actually informs policy making, that is much more respectful of the actors, of the subjects of, of adult education and literacy than has been so far.